know we've been close since we were kids And you used to swing my way And our door come out to play You tell me everything I'm always listening To the stories that we made While we were sipping lemonade But there's something in our soul And now we're boozing Now we're older we can Right, so we're just outside the valley Who are we joined with? Of course, it's time for Falling Whistle Over In real life I know, it's, 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 it's so strange, very, very strange, mate But it's nice It's it a nice really feeling good. We're here and it's a huge game. It's a it huge is. game of football. Three games without a win, That's should it. I say. Yep. Um, and Charlton, of course, they back it up or trying to back up their win against Exeter on Tuesday. Yep. How are you feeling? We spoke on your channel yesterday. Um, and I think we, are both, we both predicted a win for Portsmouth. We'll, we'll try and say that throughout the entire evening, hopefully. I did say you go 1-0 down. How are you feeling now? You're still feeling the same, still feeling as confident as you did yesterday? I think a key thing is the result here came against Exeter and that's a little bit of buoyancy, a little bit of kind of, I don't know, it's, it's going to help, isn't it? And the, the home record here is very good, a very good Charlton side. I think they've been underperforming for a couple of weeks. You've been keeping a close eye on what they've been doing. Pompey been doing the same. I mean, we've, we've been, it's about a, a month without a win. Last one I can remember, last time I can remember getting three points was against Burton Albion away from home on a Tuesday night. So it was a midweek, it wasn't a away game, it was under the lights, so it bodes well for tonight. Um, but yeah, this one's a really key one, seeing as we haven't won for, very, for a little while. Um, we, we, we haven't, um, yeah, we haven't managed to perform at the heights that we have been doing in recent weeks. So hopefully we'll, we'll get a little bit back of what we had previously and, and display it for you in front of your eyes tonight we'll see hopefully hopefully we've seen the lineup as well it's just come out yep. same as, as, as last week yep. unchanged Kobe Bishop Dane Scarlett both fit start up front as well in that 4-4-2 does that fill you with more confidence less confidence I mean to be honest with you like you say it's unchanged so you feel probably the same I've got of course different opposition yeah it's, it's worked all right so far this season um albeit there have been a couple of little blips where it's been like oh it's not it's not the most fantastic kind of way to way to start I mean are you, thing is when you play against a team that really wants to be out wide and on the break and with 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 fast paced attacking football Charlton do it Ipswich do it a lot of other teams do it Ipswich you really struggle with the formation and then um, at um, at here at the Valley they're going to be very similar it's a big old pitch as we know as you know and hopefully we're going to look to try and exploit the wide areas 4-4-2 I'm not a massive fan of at the minute personnel wise I'm a big fan of it formation wise but personnel Danny sees something we always back him because you know he's the he's the man isn't he so hoping that hoping that it works wonders and hoping it will score a couple of goals as a result finally score prediction you said 3-1 yesterday yeah we'll, yesterday. Stick, we'll stick with 3-1 stick with 3-1 we're going to concede I think because when we're a little bit a little bit leaky at the minute a couple of defensive errors is the only really way we concede so 3-1 tonight and hopefully big three points in the road the music's getting louder and the drinks are getting harder everybody knows the way that this thing goes take my Kiss me now before I'm sober. I don't want to run away, run away, run away. I don't want to. So, we're joined by another Portsmouth fan outside the valley this evening. We spoke yesterday, we spoke about the game ahead of a really big one, of course, as I just said with Tom there. Portsmouth, they need this win. They really, really need to get back on track. The gap is slowly getting bigger and bigger. Of course, they have got games in hand. How are you feeling? We're here now. I always find when you get to a stadium, you're a little bit confident you actually get there, and then I do go. It could, be, it could be more difficult than I first thought. How are you feeling now? Yeah, I mean, I was confident, obviously, last night with the stream and all that, uh, 3-0, but now I've had some time to think about it. It's going to be a tight game when you look at Charlton, you know. There's a lot riding on this game, especially what happened at the weekend. You know, we've got games now, but you've got to win them. You know, we've got a good crowd here tonight. Obviously, they're not going to have a, a packed house, but I think we can uh, definitely get a result here tonight. Uh, I had 3-0, but I'll be happy to be able to start, you know, smash and grab. You know, just get that 1-0 win. That's what we want, points on the board. And Charlton need to build on it as well, because Charlton also need to win. Yeah, exactly, They're 14, yeah. they want to climb the table. Yeah. And again, it's close as well. A win today, I think we, we looked before we got down here, a win puts them in the top 10. And that's yeah. how close it is. And that's the thing about this league, everyone can beat each other. You know, the teams down even the bottom, like, you know, like Morecambe and the Fleet, even like the Fleetwood, they took a, a result of us, you know, got the draw. So... Yeah, it's, we're, we're cautiously optimistic tonight. You know, we travelled up here um, in our well, numbers. Good numbers, as, well, yeah. numbers good as numbers. always. You know, we always travel well, Pompey, you know. So let's hope we can get a result tonight. You said 3 0 yesterday. 3 0 today? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still stick with 3 0. Stick with the guys. But, but I'll take a 1 0 as you would, yeah. like, you know. Well. But I think, I think we could concede because, you know, they. They always seem to score at least one goal. Um, so they could con we might concede early. That might wake us up a little bit. 
again, Portsmouth haven't been consistent for 90 minutes. We're either a first half team or a second half team. So we'll see where we're at, you know, half time. And that's where Danny Cowley can either, you know, if we're winning 3 0 at half time, does he tinker it with the second half? Or if we're losing 1 0, we're going to have to start thinking, you know, points on the board, you know, we need a draw at least, you know, but let's come away, let's enjoy the game, let's come away with something. Music's yeah. getting louder and the drinks are getting harder. Everybody knows the way that this thing goes. Take my hand and pull me closer. Kiss me now before I'm sober. I don't want to run away. Anyway, we're outside the valley with Andrew, of course it's Andrew. Um, hey, how are you evening. feeling? Good evening, good evening, Andrew. That's the only way we can start, isn't it? Um, how are you feeling outside the stadium now? I mean, it's a big game. It's always a big game. Live on Sky Sports as well, which means it's obviously got to be a good game of football. How are you feeling, Andrew? Yeah, I'm pretty confident. I fancy uh, we've got a good team. We've got a much better team than we've had for many years. I think there's a lot of players in contention for a lot of places, so everyone's fighting for the place now. So it's a slightly different concept to what it would have been last year this time. Ronan Curtis used to be the star of the show. Yeah. He's actually on the bench now, so that shows you how yeah. far we've come, right? Karoma so, and on one side, yeah. and then Dale on the other? Yes, exactly, and that's the reason, obviously, because they're much... Respectfully, they're much not better players, I don't think, but their commitment's more. They commit themselves better, you know. Mm. They show like they want it. And when Ronan weaves in and out of games, and because he was the star of the show, he, was, he felt like he owned the gaff, you know. So yeah, I, I fancy it. I think we'll win it here tonight. I feel it in my bones. Charlton will probably have eight thousand fans. We've got three thousand, so the atmosphere's building as well. Yeah, the atmosphere will be, it will be noisy as it always is. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure when Oxford come here. A bit noisy, yeah. isn't it? Well, yeah, and we've got a decent draw, so hopefully you get more than a draw this evening. That's what you'll be hoping for. Score prediction? Uh, 4 0 Pompey. 4 0 Pompey. Of course, I don't want to bother asking. Cheers, Andrew, mate. Cheers, Cheers buddy. Good to see you. Cheers. To swing my way, knock my door, come out to play and tell me everything. I'm always listening. Right, so it's been a couple of days since the game between Charlton and Ports within League One. I'm joined, I'm back with Tom. I'm joined with Tom again. It wasn't, it wasn't amazing, was it, in terms of performance? The atmosphere was amazing. The away support was, was incredible, as we expect from Portsmouth. However, the performance, the result. Tom, it wasn't great, was it? No, it wasn't. Um, yeah, I'm, you give full credit to Charlton Athletic, don't you, in, in this kind of situation? They absolutely did us, completely did us. And I thought past the 15-minute mark, we were devoid of ideas. Um, there was a real lack of spark, lack of confidence as well. Um, nullified by by Charlton Athletic. I said it in video when we were walking out with Alex on the way out. I said, if you put three men on Marlon Pack, he, it's a bit of a, a way of getting around Pompey at the minute, which is a real concern of mine because... Um, yeah, that that can't be the case. That really can't be the case for it for a team that 
in the first 10 games was looking like a real promotion contender to now be looking like a team that is going to be competing with the teams in and around the playoffs this season at best is, is, is very concerning. Um, I put it this way, this is probably a good good way for, for the viewers to, to take a, a bit away from the game. I turn around to you because I think you said to your mate that, oh, let's do some post-match interviews. I said, you're not going to be speaking to me because I don't want to talk about that's it. That's why I've that's... given it two days. I've given it a couple exactly. of days. We record this exactly. on Wednesday, so that sort of shows how much I think. Because I, I always sort of find, I find anger is the original emotion and the, the first emotion. And then I give it a couple of days and then, I don't know about you, but is there a little bit of concern because this win, this run is now getting longer and longer. Funnily enough, mm-hmm. the longer you don't win a game of football, your win, this run does continue. And I think you, you sort of, the frustration, the anger is the first emotion because, you know, for yourself, I mean, you went from to, from Portsmouth to Charlton, to obviously to, to London. That isn't a short distance. Luckily for me now living in London, it's not too far. And I'm not a Portsmouth fan. So again, it's not as bad for me, but for you and for the other fans that made that long journey, I mean, you sold out that away end. Incredible stuff on a Monday night. And it was on Sky Sports. Anger, frustration, the level of performance wasn't good enough. Nowhere near the level of Portsmouth at the start of the season, even though we are still at the start of the season, but the real beginning, the first sort of five, six games of the campaign. How much of it is now concerned? Because you mentioned there, are you getting found out a little bit? The 4 4 2, we spoke about it in our sort of Portsmouth review, early review. Mm-hmm. It's effective. Marlon Pack's really effective as well in that midfield, but I think some sides are now trying to find a way of, right, if we can nullify the source, which is Marlon Pack, it's much easier to sort of go at you in different ways. Is it concern now? It's, it's concern, but it's, it's a, it, with, with a level-headedness about it as well. Charlton, a very good team, have been massively underperforming points-wise this season, in my view, and having stood there for 90, whatever it was, 96 minutes, mm. watched them, I think... Although Raksaki was off the pace on a couple of occasions, I think he's a really good player. Blackett Taylor's a joke in League One, an absolute joke. He mm. ran his socks off and, and was incredible. Um, and then, you know, you know they, they've, they've got talents all over the pitch. And, and I was really impressed by, um, his name's gone, but the guy used to be at Crew, Charlie Kirk. Um, Charlie Kirk, yeah. Yeah, I was very impressed by him too. And you, you just think, you know, we we did test their couple their keeper on a couple of occasions. Yes, that that was true. Um, but all, few and far between, and very very sort of occasional during the match. It's concerning that that Marlon Pack is obviously proving to be such a a, a source of of excitement, as you've said, and a, a source of the way that Pompey are playing their football. I'm also, and the reason why I say level headedness is because we are injury stricken at the minute. And you saw, mm. you saw with your own eyes, Michael Jacobs came on for 15 minutes, then went off with a hamstring. You know, mm. your luck's out when that's happening. Um, Jane and Reed, who's obviously a, not particularly a first 11 player per se, but been confirmed today that he's got another ACL injury. Um, so he's going to be out for, for the foreseeable two. And you've also got the, the, the left back, right back situation, which I think I've discussed with you already, but it's obviously proving to be a really big issue. And I, I said it after the game on, on Monday that can't be the extent of the problem. But if you put it all together, a very good Charlton side who are underperforming the Marlon Pack thing and then not being able to have Conor Ogilvy where he wants to be and having him to play on completely the wrong side of the pitch where he's half the player that he is. He's a fantastic footballer, but he's half the player he is um, on the wrong wing, basically. And that that's a concern. Tom Lowry has, has been coming back and Marlon Pack and Tom Lowry play much better than Marlon Pack and Joe Morrell do. I don't know why, but it just kind of looks like it's the case. Um, yeah, concern, but at the same time, I'm also looking at it. We haven't been very good since Burton away, which is over a month ago now. Looking at the games in there, Fleetwood's the most concerning one out of those with full respect to them. But, you, you know, the, the draw with Plymouth and then the game um, on Monday evening, and it's they're, they're two really difficult games and obviously we've lost to Ipswich so two losses this season come at Portman Road in the Valley and even as as a, a Pompey side that's looking for promotion you've got to give it to those two teams those are tough places to go and try and get points from so for our two losses to have come at the Valley and at Portman Road this season so far not not too anxious about that but I am concerned about the level of performance and the way we sunk as well wasn't good to be I think it was 2-0 down within half an hour and then you know when and, and that in the moment as well, that, that one that one really concerning thing for me and probably the overriding emotion last night was how we didn't show any any kind of n- know-how in the moment. When Pat gets sent off, literally within five seconds of the ball being in play, you then concede the third. That is mm-hmm. not a professional team that is looking to get out of League One. That is a really, really 
schoolboy error that needs to be sorted quite quickly. So concern, yes. I would say frustration. I was disappointed after the final whistle went up. You, you know, I wasn't ripping chairs up, was I? You saw me when we no, were no. leaving. I was, I was just a bit subdued and quiet and didn't really want to take, I wanted to take my mind off it if I could. And that was the case for the nine or 10 of us that were there that you saw from Pompey fan base and guys who I do the videos with. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, the Forest Green's a perfect opportunity to get a response. Lose at Forest Green, Jack. And, you know, you, you, you start to, Tear your hair out even more. You spoke there. I remember we we said it's really weird because we're speaking about games of football that we're both at. I remember there was a, there was a moment where you were two 0 down, and at that point, a two 0 down with I think it was a like twenty minutes to go or so, twenty five minutes. That you know that that's game on. A red card, then conceding to make it three 0 mm. The game's over at that point. And, and like you say there, there, there's moments where you can stick in the game and you can go and grab something. You know, sides of. So as we come back from two to two goals down, but three goals down to ten men—that's really tough. And ca- at the knee how I think you're right. The knee how was w- really was missing. How much did that formation expose you um, in, in terms of the way that you play? Because it's really fascinating watching back your, your, your pre-match interview. You won't want to watch it back, but unfortunately you will tomorrow when the, when the episode comes out. You actually said I asked you the question. I did it on purpose. I know it's easy to say now. I said it on purpose, but it is. I said, "How's that four four two looking?" Because there are a few players missing that are quite crucial in that 4-4-2. Again, you have to play Conor Ogle, but I think he's an exceptional left back on that right-hand side that you just mentioned there. Lowry and Pack are the two that have been working so well. I mean, against Forest Green, you're not going to have Marlon Pack. He's going to be suspended. And of course, Lowry's fitness is, is getting there. How much do that 4-4-2 and that formation? You said the system itself is not the problem. It's the personnel. They were your words mm. before the game. I think you got proved very right in the end. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it is a personnel issue and it not not in the case that I'm questioning the ability of the players. I'm questioning where they are playing at the moment. And at, to that end, I'm not bringing Danny Cowley's sort of not knowledge of football in, into consideration because I don't think there's very few people that are qualified enough to, to question that on the on in definitely in, in, in League One football terms. Um, and certainly I'm I'm not the person to question it. But I yeah, I, I just... I think there's, a, there's far, far too much of we're out of pace so much and we're, we've misstepped far from where we want to be, which in turn, as you said, exposes us. And I don't know if I did mention it and I'm sure I'll watch it back, but I, I was acutely aware that Charlton would play a high and wide game on that expansive pitch at the Valley. Mm-hmm. And Marcus, who's a Charlton fan, said to me on, on the Sunday show that, that you came on that they, they will like to get down those wings. And, and how, how tight, to the centre midfield that Owen Dale was playing on Monday night was a real so narrow. You played well. so yeah. narrow. Yeah, we did, and and he has found some great success from from that right hand side, and and you know he's he's even scored a couple as a result of being out there. Mm. Um, Josh Caroma wasn't at his trademark best, and you know there's a, a, a mis, misstep in formation plus a load of players that weren't playing to the levels that they should have been. We were far from good enough on Monday night. We we're absolutely horrendous, and you you, you just you you, were, you think how good the performance level has been on occasions this season at home at Fratton Park against Peterborough, second half away at Hillsborough, um, some, some of the football that we played against Plymouth coming up against really good sides in this division, how far away from that we were on Monday and how quickly we can get away from that on Monday was, was really concerning to me. Um, but we, we've still got to think that it's a long old season and it, we've got plenty of game time to sort the formation out. Wholesale changes will will happen on 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 Saturday. Danny's almost forced into playing Jay Mingi, who's the young guy who came on with sort of, I think it was about twenty minutes to go that everyone was really pleased with. I think he, he will start in midfield alongside either one of Morale or Lowry, um, and and w- whether he goes for a back three with Robertson, Morrison, and um, and Ogilvy, or or whether he he gets sorry, um, or whether he gets Swanson involved in a back four and actually plays players that are suited to their positions he, he brought him on a little bit and I don't know what you thought of him Jack but I think he did okay in that in that setup and yeah Zach Swanson's a, you know, he's a, he's a right he is a right back isn't he he is yeah and so he, why is Conor Ogre playing at left back and you've got a right back on the bench because he doesn't trust Swanson is is my thinking or he he, he sees something tactically wise that none of right. the rest of us see whether whether there's an overload in, in if he goes for that if you know when he does it in a worst case scenario um, maybe a bit of experience for Conor Ogilvy. You could say that you know he has played on the left back and right back roles, but we know how much more he's suited to, to that left back position. Um, it's just you know 
Mm. Rafferty has got to be, what, three weeks post-op now. So I don't know how long it's going to take from the comeback. I'm not a doctor, but I'm uh, really hoping it's not too long. Um, it's, it's just, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's an issue that, that I don't know how we're going to sort out. Luckily, don't want to speak too soon, and I want to use my words wisely here, but tamer opposition in Forest Green. I no, that's what, that, that was be... my next question. I said, how do yeah. you how do you take that into Forest Green? Because that game now is even bigger than it was. Um, Biggest game of the season. Biggest it, game it, of the season. It, because that, this is a reaction game, isn't it? This is a reaction mm. game. This is a game where you need to show, right, we're not going to be the side that started really well, fell off a cliff, and then you're going to finish around sixth or seventh come the end of the year because you had a really good start, had a blip, and then you're playing catch-up. You can't play catch-up this year. Plymouth are on an absolute roll. Ipswich on a roll. Sheffield Wednesday can't stop winning. Barnsley are going to keep playing football. Peterborough also started winning back. games again now, haven't they, as well? So, Which is a concern for you for this yeah, weekend. Can't, can't wait for it. How do, you, <laughs> how, how do you... Because you can't... You have to win this game. And it's so strange talking about it after 13, 14 games. We're at must-win games in Sky Bet League One. Forest Green are currently just got the league table up here. They are in the relegation zone. They're on 12 points from these 14 games that they've played. 21st in the league. Only, of course, the, the side just inside that, that bottom four. Look, on paper, you should win the game. You've got a better mm. squad. I'm happy to say that. I'm comfortable in saying that. But they've beaten Bolton at their place. Yeah. And and they and, and all they did was they, they scored one goal and defended for their lives. Mm. And there's nothing to say they can't do that against you. And look, I'm going to be as respectful as I can. Don't take this the wrong way. But look at that performance on Monday. There's no reason to say they couldn't do the same thing mm-hmm. against John Saturday, really. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm worst case scenario. I'm, I'm anticipating a well, not worst case scenario, but one of the bad scenarios would be that we have a similar outing to what we did against Fleetwood at Fratton Park, which is yeah, where, draw the game. yeah, which is yeah. which is where you draw, but but you have enough opportunities to win it, win two or three football matches in one single game, but the defensive resoluteness and and the way in which the the opposition set up doesn't allow you to. Um, I think Forest Green are fighting for their lives. I don't think it's going to be an easy game at all. I mean, I'm I'm probably going to overstep the mark in saying this, but I I think it's it's still a, a bit of a concern if we don't win the game by at least two or three goals. No, you I look agree. at what teams like Sheffield Wednesday have done to them already this season. Um, I know it was a it was a tighter affair for Ipswich's trip to Forest Green, but that was very early on in a very early days in the season. Although we're still pretty early days, but it's very early days. Um, yeah, I think it needs to be a four or five nil hammering from a Pompey point of view. I think they need to go there, take the game to them, or we need to go there, take the game to them, get up by at least two or three within the first half hour, 40 minutes. I think we, we give ourselves a chance then. Um, we, we, we have the game in our hands in, in that, in that, um, with that in mind. But yeah, I just, um, I, I think my, my final word would be that we you just need to give Charlton Athletic a load of credit and I'm not going to come here and, and sit here and say that it was all our own making because the majority of what happened on Monday night was but at the same time it was a really resolute well drilled knew what they were going to do knew the game plan thought mm. us out outsmarted us Charlton Athletic side which I think a lot of people may have been sleeping on given their poor start to the season but you know it shows that that 5-1 win at their place against Plymouth wasn't something to turn your nose up at and um and, and now they, they've beaten us fair and square at their place too. And they're still unbeaten at, at the Valley, which is, you know, not, not a lot of sides can say that. Pompey well, can still. Thankfully, it's both we, holding on to. thankfully we both <laughs> played them now at the Valley. So we, we, exactly. we can both get that game out of the way. way. Yeah. That's out of the way. Tom, thank you so much for coming on. You didn't have to because, again, that, I can tell it still hurts a little bit. But like you say, all eyes now have to be on Forest Green. That'll be Danny Cowley's message to the players. That's your message, I think, to the fans as well. You know, you have to now look at, yeah, at Saturday because you can't look back. Um, you, you've got to just... Look at the the very minor positives in the game, but most importantly, learn from the big um, mistakes that were made. Look forward to Saturday and like you say, just go and win the game. Tom, thank you so much for coming on. This does round up the, I'm still looking for a name. I'll be honest, by the time it comes out, it will have a name. I'm thinking outside the ground. Of course, there was some footage we got inside it as well. I really, really enjoyed making it. Apologies for the little bit of the delay, but I want to sort of try and make this the best possible video that I could make. Speaking to Tom in real life, which was strange, but lovely outside the stadium. And now speaking to him back, well, we're a bit more familiar virtually <laughs> after the game. Uh, Tom, thank you so much for being part of it. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm hoping to do that again soon. Until next time, I've been Jack. This has been the Unfound Podcast. Tom, see you later, mate. Take care. Thanks, mate.